Hello everyone, today I'm going to be giving you 10 ways to reduce the weight of your drone. So in my opinion, reducing the weight of your drone is the best way to improve its performance. Reducing your drone's weight will improve punch outs, it will improve cornering, it will improve flight times, and it will actually even improve durability. So when you are putting your quad together or you're buying parts for your quad, you really should have the mindset that every single gram and every single tenth of a gram matters because weight is that important. So I take weight extremely seriously. My main quad, the custom tubular quad with a Hero 7 and a Forest 1300 fully loaded weighs just 596 grams. And my backup quad, the Hyperlite Glide 6 inch with a Hero 7 and a Forest 1300 weighs just 605 grams. So like I said, I really take weight very seriously. And quite frankly, if you have a five or six inch quad carrying a GoPro and its all up weight is over 650 grams, well, not to be rude, but your quad is overweight. Luckily, in this video, I have a weight loss plan for your quad. So maybe even your quad can join the elite sub 600 gram club. All right, so all joking aside, let's take a look at the 10 ways to reduce the weight of your quad. The first way to reduce the weight of your quad is to cut the 3D printed crap. 3D printed plastics have a very poor strength to weight ratio, so you need a lot of it in order to make a strong part. And I really see a lot of extraneous and unnecessary 3D printed parts on quads. Yes, they can look cool. However, as far as weight and performance is concerned, usually they are not very helpful. So on my quads, I really try to keep the 3D printed stuff down to a minimum. So for example, GoPro mounts can potentially add a lot of weight to your quad. The pre-printed mounts you can buy from Brain3D are typically around 30 grams, which is a lot. The custom 3D printed GoPro mount I use on the tubular quad weighs just 12 grams for comparison. Another 3D printed thing that adds a lot of weight to quads is arm bumpers on flat carbon plate arms. And yes, they can save the ends of your arms. However, at least the way I fly, the carbon in the arms will delaminate by the time the ends of the arms are all chewed up. So it's a personal decision you have to make, but just keep in mind you're adding weight right where you don't want it at the ends of the arms, which can negatively affect the responsiveness of the quad. And lastly, another place I see a lot of 3D printed stuff is at the back of the quad, where a lot of times there is a big hunk of 3D printed material holding up the FPV antenna and the receiver wires. And I really dislike those because you can get the same functionality with a few zip ties, which weigh maybe a gram or two, whereas the 3D printed stuff is definitely gonna weigh a lot more. So trying to keep the 3D printed stuff to a minimum is a great way to reduce the weight of your quad. The next way to save weight on your quad is to switch to a modern video transmitter antenna that directly connects to the video transmitter via UFL or MMCX. The old style video transmitter antennas like this one had a very bulky wire, a very bulky antenna design, and also a very bulky and heavy SMA connector. So the newer antennas have the very small UFL or MMCX connectors, the very thin raw coax cable, and very small antennas themselves. So these are way lighter than the old style antennas, and in addition to making the antenna lighter, you are also eliminating the adapter that goes from the video transmitter to the bulky SMA connector. So this is an easy way to remove 10 or more grams from your quad. Another way to reduce the weight of your quad is to change out the hardware. So most commercially available frames ship with steel hardware and steel is good because it's really strong. However, it is very dense and therefore can be very heavy. So your average quad frame can have between 10 and 20 grams of steel in it. So what you can do is actually swap that hardware out for aluminum or titanium. So aluminum has about a third of the density of steel, which can lead to huge weight savings. However, it is not as strong as steel, so you may want to avoid using it in higher stress areas. You may want to stick with steel or titanium for your arm screws but then maybe use aluminum for your standoff screws, which tend to undergo a lot less stress. Now, titanium is a really good option if you can afford it because it has about half the density of steel, but has similar strength to steel. So 
you shouldn't really expect anything to start breaking all of a sudden if you swap from steel to titanium and you can basically use titanium wherever you had steel before. Now speaking of hardware, another great way to save weight on your quad is to use two motor screws instead of four. Now this is a bit of a personal choice because if you only use two motor screws, you are more likely to bend the base of your motor. However, there are weight savings to be had like this and there are plenty of people who run just two screws in their motors. Now, if you're uncomfortable running just two motor screws, it is worth noting that using four aluminum screws will actually be lighter than using two steel screws because aluminum is that much lighter. So another way to save weight on your quad is to switch to a micro FPV camera if you're not using one already. So micro FPV cameras have the same performance as their equivalent mini or full size counterparts. However, they are way lighter. You can save 10 or more grams by switching from a full size FPV camera down to a micro size camera. So once again, this is a great way to save weight. Another way you can save weight is by reducing the thickness of your battery lead on your quad. So that means you're actually increasing the wire gauge because higher wire gauges are thinner. So I personally used to run 12 gauge wire for my battery lead, which was total overkill. Now I run 14 gauge. And if you're running 6S and you're not pulling a ton of current, you can even get away with 16 gauge wire and really take advantage of the lower current levels of 6S. So that's a great way to save a couple grams. Another way to save a lot of weight is to make sure you are using a four in one ESC. Now, if you are still running individual ESCs, four individual ESCs are heavier than a single four in one ESC. In addition, all of the wiring associated with individual ESCs is very heavy. So there is a ton of weight to be saved by using a four in one ESC. Now, I know a lot of you watching this are already running four in one ESCs, but something I want to mention is that four in one 30 by 30 ESCs have gotten heavier over the years. So in my opinion, they've really gotten out of hand. There are plenty of four in one ESCs that provide an insane 60 amps per motor, which is total overkill and it just adds weight. So to give you an example, the Hobbywing Gen 3 60 amp 4 in 1 ESC weighs 15 grams, whereas the second gen Hobbywing ESC, which provided 45 amps, was actually 4 grams lighter. So really use an ESC that only provides what you need. And quite frankly, there are very few 30 by 30 options these days that provide reasonable current ratings. So I would actually recommend going to a 20 by 20 ESC unless you really have those high current demands because the 20 by 20 ESC ratings are a lot more reasonable. Really 30 amps per motor is plenty for most people. Speaking of the powertrain, another great way to save weight is by switching to lighter motors. Now it is worth mentioning that if you have been shaving weight everywhere else on your build, you are not going to need as big of a motor because the quad is lighter, so you're not gonna need as much thrust to get the same level of performance out of it. So because of that, you should probably consider reducing your stator size, and that will in turn save weight. Now another thing to mention about motors is that motors are not built equally. So some motors are lighter than others even though they have the same stator size. So for example, these Zing motors, which a lot of people run, which are really pretty and have the polka dots, and I really like how they look. I will never run them because they are not as light as the Hyperlite motors given equivalent stator size. So to give you a personal example, I used to run T-Motor 2207 motors, which were 35 grams a piece. And then after that, I switched to Hyperlite 2207 and a half motors, which are only 30 grams a piece. So five grams a motor is a weight savings of 20 grams, which is massive. And I actually went up in stator size doing that. So once again, consider going down in stator size and keep in mind that all motors are not created equal in terms of weight, even if the stator sizes are the same. Another way to save weight on your quad is to use a lighter battery. Now the obvious way to do this is to go to a smaller battery that has less energy stored. So basically you can drop the capacity of the battery and it will be lighter. Now something I wanna mention is that if you have switched from 4S to 6S, an 866 milliamp hour 6S actually has the same amount of energy stored as a 4S1300. So it's very likely that 
if you have switched from 4S to 6S, your 6S batteries actually have more energy stored compared to the old 4S batteries you are running. So consider shrinking the milliamp hours of your battery. Now another way to save weight with your batteries is to actually switch which manufacturer or which specific model of battery you are using because all batteries are not actually the same weight even if they have the same ratings. So to give you an example, I've been flying the China Hobby Line 1300 4S 70C batteries for a very long time now and they're not a very heavy battery. However, I just picked up some of these new Tattoo Funfly 1300 4S batteries and they are 14 grams lighter than the China Hobby Line batteries even though they have the same ratings. So just keep that in mind. There are weight variances between manufacturers and between models of battery. So take a look at that the next time you are buying batteries. The last thing that I want to talk about which is a very drastic change but I really think it needs to be mentioned is switching to a lighter frame. And the reason I really want to talk about this is because there are a ton of really popular, well-designed frames out there which are unfortunately quite heavy. So my definition of heavy would be over 120 grams including the hardware. So that encompasses a ton of frames and if you're not sure if your frame is heavy, go look at the manufacturer's specifications and if they don't mention what the weight is, it's probably a heavy frame. So keep this in mind. This is why I really like the Hyperlite Glide. The six inch version, I weighed it and I found that with all the steel hardware, it weighed just 114 grams. So that's why I chose this frame because it's so light. And keep in mind, if you're keeping the weight of all the other components down, don't be too turned off by really skinny arms and really skimpy looking designs because the durability of your quad increases as you reduce weight because there is less energy that has to be dissipated in a crash if your quad is lighter. Okay, so those are 10 ways to make your quad lighter. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something from it, please make sure to give it a like. Let me know down in the comments other ways to save weight that I missed because I know there are a lot more. And if you wanna see more content like this and want to help support the channel, please make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching.